Detective Bosch here. Listen carefully, Mr. Bose. Detective Bose. There's a bomb planted at the corner of Shenton Way and Maxwell Road. Get them wait for further instructions. Oh, really? Yeah, I've heard this one before. I'm afraid you haven't heard this one. Do you recall the unexplained robberies at Marina Bay Sands last month? That's classified. Do you know what happened to the money? What do you know about this? We did it with the help of quantum teleportation, Mr. Bose. Goodbye. Your timing's perfect, as usual. What, you can't do this one by yourself for a change? Meet me at the corner of Maxwell Road and Shenton Way. Hurry. Don't go anywhere. I came all the way here for a suitcase. Look, there's someone way more interesting waiting for me at the beach, so if you don't mind... Detective Bose, Detective Tan. Nice to see you together again. I won 50 million US dollars. Deposited to Cayman Island Bank account. 31415926535. Hey, how the hell am I supposed to remember so many numbers? It's the number of pi to the 11th decimal place. Hey, what if we don't? It's simple. I press a button and everything goes to hell. Do you really think I was born yesterday? If you want to see tomorrow, you should do exactly as I say. What makes you think I won't call in a bomb squad and all you blow is your 50 mil? Call whoever you want. The new inside has a sensitive quantum trigger. Even a single photon can trigger it off. Now we have 58 minutes and 30 seconds. I think this guy's bluffing. Let's just call in the bomb squad. That's what you should have done in the first place, boss. But you, you never learn. I don't know. You know, funny, I think this guy means business. He knew about what happened at MBS. All that money gone to the casino. Could be just a fluke. Maybe. What about the quantum guy? What about him? He was talking about some quantum sensitive trigger. Something about quantum teleportation. I need to make a call. This is Professor Vedral's personal assistant. How can I help you? Detective Tom wants to speak to you. Are you available? Really? What does that woman want now? May I know what is this all about? She says it's very important. Ask her if it's as important as five years ago when she put me in the joint. Please go on. She says it's about a nuke and a quantum trigger. She also says we have 45 minutes before we kiss the night goodbye. I'm not interested. Besides, we are going to the airport. I've got to meet the president. He's not interested. Tan says we meet at the corner of Shenton Way and Maxwell Road in 10 minutes, or else you go back into the can. Okay. Cancel the president. I ain't going back to jail. Here's what you need to know. 
we got a call that there's a nuke in this case connecting to a quantum trigger. Nice to see you too. I don't have time for that. You don't have time? I had two years in the cooler to think about it. Hey, I don't want to interrupt your lovely get-together, all right? We got 30 minutes left. As I was saying, he said the trigger is so sensitive that a single photon will activate nuke. Yeah, so what? So that's why I called him. Who are you? Depends who asks. I'm either a criminal mastermind, reformed, or a quantum physicist. Just cut it out and tell us what's going on. Is there a nuke inside? Should we call a bomb squad? Is he bluffing? Okay, I'll level with you. In order for you to call his bluff, you need to open the suitcase and check if there is a bomb there or not. But for you to see the bomb, you need a single photon to enter, bounce of the bomb, and come back into your eye. That's why he was talking about a single photon sensitivity. Is there anything we can use that's lighter than a photon? <laughs> I'm afraid not. So you're saying there's no way we can open this suitcase to see if there's a bomb? We're screwed! Not yet. Your guardian angel is here to save the day. But I need two things from you. What do you want? First, I want the slate clean. No more police record. Done. Anton, listen, it's urgent. Send me five beam splitters, ten mirrors, and a single photon laser source. Pronto. I'm texting you the GPS coordinates now. What's the second thing? Second thing? A box of Romeo and Julietta's Churchill limited edition. Sayonara, guys. Now I need my double espresso. He did it. How the hell can he tell what's inside a suitcase without looking? Hi, I'm Latko Virgil, and if you want to know how I did it, please stay with me another five minutes. Here I have a basic unit of what I needed to uh, detect the bomb or to detect the presence or absence of the bomb in the suitcase. I have a single photon laser where I'm able to press the button on the laser and generate a single photon that comes out. The blue piece of kit is a beam splitter which acts a little bit like your sunglasses so with a half probability it will send and reflect the photon to go into one detector and with the other half it will just simply transmit the photon and let it go into this detector and be detected. So every time we run this experiment we generate a single photon and then quantum mechanics says that the photon randomly ends up in detector 1 or detector 2. If we repeat this many times then half of the times this detector would be detecting the photon and the other half this detector. For the purposes of my experiment and the bomb diffusion, I really need to run this only once. So I will press this button, a single photon will come out and I will be able to somehow detect the bomb. This slightly extended kit that we have here is called an interferometer and all I did is added another beam splitter which has exactly the same properties as the first beam splitter. So instead of detecting whether the photon has bounced off or whether it's been transmitted, all I do is I recombine these two and I have two mirrors here and I recombine them at another beam splitter and now I run the same experiment. So I press the button here, I generate a single photon and what's weird about quantum mechanics is that when I do this I notice that only this detector records photons and this detector never records photons. 
And so what that means is that the photon going through a beam splitter, it's not a random process, but it really goes both ways at the same time. And quantum mechanics then tells us that these two ways, when they meet at the second beam splitter, they cancel out going in this direction and they amplify each other going in the other direction. So actually the photon is never detected in this, in this, in, in this way. So every time we press the button and generate a single photon, we always notice that this detector clicks. And this is the key property that the photon exists in both of these arms at the same time that helped me detect whether there was a bomb in the suitcase. So all I did is constructed this kind of interferometer around the suitcase. And the suitcase, as we know, could be empty or it may really contain some kind of very powerful device. So now we can go through the same experiment in the two cases. If the suitcase is empty, we press the button, a single photon comes out, and as we explained before, we always get this detector to click. So basically we generate a photon and we get a deterministic click in this detector. The, on the other hand, if the suitcase contains a bomb, what we then discover is that if the photon goes this way, when it comes to the second beam splitter, it doesn't get the other half to interfere with because there is something preventing the other half. And then we suddenly get a possibility of a click in this detector. So the amazing conclusion quantum mechanically is that if this, this detector clicks, it allows me to say that there was a bomb inside the, inside the suitcase, but it didn't go off because the photon ultimately ended up going the other way. Of course, you might well be asking the following question. What happens is when the photon comes to the first beam splitter, it ends up going down this route. And as we said, there is a 50-50 chance for that to happen. Then, of course, we are very unlucky if there is a bomb inside the case because the photon going down this way will hit the bomb and the promise is that the bomb is so sensitive that it will immediately go off. So this setup suggests that we still have a high one-half probability chance of triggering off the device and exploding the nuclear bomb. However, this can be improved to an arbitrarily high probability of success. And in fact, to do that, all we need to do is make the beam splitter much more likely to reflect than to transmit. And then we need a sequence of a number of beam splitters which is going to keep reflecting and transmitting the bomb. And if you remember in the movie, I was requesting five beam splitters and ten mirrors in order to amplify this probability to something like a 99% uh, success rate. And you can make this probability even higher by extending this kind of very simple setup. So that was the key. With five beam splitters, I had only 1% chance of exploding the bomb and 99% chance of detecting whether the bomb is not or, or, or there or not. And as it happened in the, in the movie, the, the, case was, the suitcase was empty. Now I need another double espresso. Thank you.